Sydney, in this year of our Lord, 1811. Our governor, Lachlan Macquarie, the first governor to give our convict colony a sense of civic pride, has set aside a much needed area east of the settlement as a common for grazing and watering the stock. The Lachlan Swamps, as it has become known, forms part of a large swamp and pond system stretching to Botany Bay, the original site for the colony. Now, in 1826, Sydney can boast a population of 10,000 souls, bond and free. And with the periodic droughts we have suffered recently, we are hard put to find enough clean water. Our only water supply is a small stream running through the settlement and emptying into Sydney Cove. But in the years since the first fleet arrived, it has become a stinking sewer. John Busby, a civil engineer recently arrived from England, has been commissioned to provide Sydney with another water supply. He's devised a plan to run water by gravity through a tunnel from the Lachlan Swamps to the race course, which later became known as Hyde Park. Considering the difficulty in persuading free men to work on such an unpleasant job and the cost to the colony, they plan to use convicts to excavate the tunnel. Work commenced in 1827 and it has taken 10 long years to complete. Now known as Busby's Bore, the water flows freely to a standpipe at the racecourse, where the townspeople collect it in buckets. A great improvement to the colony. As we near the end of our first century in this land, the Governor of New South Wales, Lord Carrington, has proposed that the Lachlan Water Reserve be turned into a grand public park. To this end, all the natural bushland has been cleared and the park is to be completed in time for the centenary celebrations in 1888. The park will be financed by subdividing and selling the land surrounding it and the houses built will enhance the garden atmosphere of the park. The park reminds me of those splendid parks in England during Queen Victoria's reign, with the same wrought iron fences and sandstone gates. The carriageways and paths are lined with rows of exotic trees, giving an orderly appearance. And the swampy reservoirs of the old Lachlan swamps are transformed into cool expanses of ornamental lakes. Statues of heroic and notable figures grace the Grand Drive, the main carriageway circling the park. Oh, <laughs> 
Today is the centenary of settlement in Australia. All the governors of the colonies and sundry officials gathered at Centennial Park, where Lord Carrington opened the park and dedicated it to the people of New South Wales forever. This is Julia, the voice of ethnic Australia. Yeah, mate, she's bloody. She's bloody. Never before have the military forces of the British Empire assembled in such numbers in any of the colonies as assembled today in Centennial Park. Australia's first Governor-General, Lord Hopeton, and the first Federal Cabinet are being sworn in. Federation of Australia, the six colonies united as an independent, self-governing nation. It's been many years since that historic day, and I've often wondered if the pavilion still stands, marking the spot of Australia's federation, and if those glorious statues still grace the Grand Drive. And I wonder what has become of the park, this park in the middle of a city. Does it mean as much to the future generations as it did to us?
<laughs> hey, quick victory roll. Hey. <laughs> Please hold yours, Brian. Yes, sir. Okay.